that last guy had a really nice suit. When I was a boy, my brothers and I would build wooden block cities across my parents' herringbone floor. I had, I had no idea what would come of it from the time, but the story of herringbone is much longer than this. The Egyptians were amazing innovators. They were farmers and irrigators. They harnessed the Nile. They created beautiful textiles. They were architects and mathematicians. As mathematicians, they, created, uh, they were obsessed with the geometry of nature in harness in looking at the flora and fauna of the Nile River uh, for um, inspiration. From that, they found 17 simple geometries. From these, uh, all pattern exists in our society today. From these geometries, they created beautiful, rich patterns that adorned Egyptian life. Uh, their textiles, their clothing, uh, uh, their architecture, their, um, even the, the tombs of pharaohs. They also were amazing problem solvers. They uh, had to build these great cities, these great tombs. And so in order to do this, they had to oftentimes find material that was a long way away. Uh, so what they had to do was they went up to the mountains uh, near Lake Moiris, and they built roads out of the stone that they were quarrying to bring to Giza and created roads out of them, the first stone roads in the world, which is really freaking interesting. It was just <laughs> slabs, slabs of stone covered in sand that they could then roll lumber over and bring the stone to Giza. Much like the Egyptians, the Romans uh, uh, harnessed nature. They brought water from the mountains to their cities. Uh, they invented concrete, but they also had an amazing army. In order to bring that army from one end of the empire to the other, they created a vast system of roads, art an arterial road system that never existed before. Uh, communication never traveled so quickly. Um, and, uh, Next slide. <laughs> Building on the Egyptians, uh, it was still a stone road base, but underneath it they created a compacted aggregate base that was uh, filled with crushed rock and earth and mortar and cement. They took the cement they invented and put it underneath it. They also created curbs, which had never existed before. It was a well-drained uh, road, so it had lasted for eternity. You still see it here today. These, these pictures were taken in the last 10 years. It still exists. Uh, in Pompeii and throughout uh, Europe. They also created a variety of different patterns for different uses in different places. Uh, in cities, pedestrian environments, vehicular environments. But one of the most interesting to me is opus picatum, or spiked work, which they called it. We call it herringbone in, in, in English today because it resembles the uh, skeletal structure of the herringbone fish, which is actually, kind of interestingly, the most common fish in the Atlantic Ocean, the Atlantic herring. I like to compare it to uh, the big oil logo of Chevron. The difference between the Chevron pattern and the herringbone pattern is that herringbone is broken at the aris or point. Uh, and it, what, the d big difference is, is that herringbone is an interlocking joint. Early Romans uh, tried, they, they emulated the Egyptians. Yes, I spelled Egyptian wrong. Um, <laughs> They didn't quite get it. They were using crude uh, mortar principles, uh, rough hewn stones. Eventually, as quarries uh, and, and, and brick makers became more refined, uh, they built an incredibly interlocking joint that you see here. When put under compression by wheels or horses, it became extremely uh, powerful. 1,500 years later, uh, the pattern reappeared in um, Ita the Italian Renaissance most prolifically in Brunelleschi's dome in Florence. He used the pattern to create the dome, which gives it its unique shape and help, holds it under compression. In modern times, uh, as a landscape architect at Olin, we still look back to history and nature for inspiration, uh, and we use herringbone throughout uh, all of our projects. Uh, we use it in our public streets, our, our public sidewalks, our crosswalks, our public parks, Independence Mall in Philadelphia. Frank Furness in the early 20th century used it at uh, Papa Plaza. We also used it in Los Angeles. Uh, we were influenced by the Native American cultures that were there. We looked at their Indian baskets for inspiration for a transit center at Union Station in Los Angeles. And we used those patterns to create uh, the plaza. Luckily for me, I'm no longer creating wooden block cities in my parents' living room. Luckily for you, uh, we're creating places that enhance life that are tied to a rich history, culture, and material. Thanks.